Hello friends, a lot of you requested me to make a technical architecture video on Netflix and trust me it was some challenge because it is such a massive case study in itself that you can have two, three, four videos on it. But this video I have tried abstracting some of the complexities and tried coming up with an architecture at a high level so that it gives you enough understanding of how this massive Netflix platform works behind the scenes. Now I can make mistakes and if you think that there is some mistake here and there then do correct it in the comment section i'll be more than happy to uh, learn from it but the idea is just to tell you how it works behind the scenes because it is asked a lot in our interviews in system design interviews in architecture interviews so let's start from a user flow where you know a user is tried opening netflix app on his laptop on his computer anywhere so now what netflix has done netflix has created two kind of brains an intelligent brain which does smart things and a dumb brain okay what does that mean so we'll understand that as we'll progress on this architecture so the first thing is as you know netflix has uh, you know processes billions of events every day almost 200 million plus users logs in and it accounts for more than 15 percent of the overall internet traffic so the scale is really huge so what netflix has done over the period of time is it has homegrown a lot of services on its own which was then further taken by other uh, big companies as well but at the very beginning what it does is like when the user tries searching for squid games his or her favorite netflix web series then the first thing which happens is this request goes to elastic load balancer because obviously so many users are there and so many requests are to be processed so it is kind of a traffic inspector sitting uh, right at the center of the road diverting traffic so elastic load balancer this they use of aws their most of their architecture which is cloud based is on aws so aws elastic load balancer is used for processing the request after that comes a networking framework which is netty.io it is an open source framework which is used for processing all the different requests which are coming and for having very quick input and output operations at a network layer so netty works at layer 4 so your tcp and udp packets everything goes through netty because it is very very efficient and once it goes through netty then the actual magic starts happening where we start understanding the microservices architecture how they have distributed everything into small small architecture after netty comes homegrown api gateway of netflix which is zool okay now it has multiple filters in it but we will not go into the details of that i am skipping that intentionally you know zool is your api gateway and from here this api gateway ensures that okay which api request needs to go where but again there is again a very interesting thing made by netflix and maybe if required what i will do i will make a table of all the services which we are talking about and give you that for free you can download it maybe i'll put it in the link description so that you can download that sheet and understand it in more detail but understand that zool is the homegrown service which is used netty is an open source but zool is an api gateway once the request goes to api gateway after that there is another service which is called as hystrix i'm not sure whether it is homegrown or it was taken by someone so uh, maybe i'll put it somewhere in the description whatever i think i'm i might miss i'll put it in the text or description somewhere okay this is for resiliency it is a resiliency framework because so many requests will come and then if it directly starts hitting the microservices then it is not a good uh, setup so what histic does is it implements a very important pattern for resiliency which is called as circuit breaker so circuit breaker pattern basically means is that histic ensures that in case there is no response from a particular microservices the user is not getting stuck so either we are giving something back from the cache or you know making sure that some other microservices is feeding the other request but the user experience is not hampered and that is what histrix does by implementing the circuit breaker pattern so after histrix now comes the actual meat of the actual work which is done so you might have a microservice here for a user profile okay there could be another service which could be your view history of the user what the user is watching there could be multiple there could be billing for example so we have to uh, understand whether uh, you know 
the user is having the right level of subscription or not and this is where you know the magic comes because now Netflix always treats every microservices independently so billing service is a transactional kind of a service so it needs asset transaction at a database level so it uses database mysql similarly user profile also might use mysql whereas something which is called as viewing history because it could be unstructured or semi-structured data coming up then cassandra is used for a no sql database these are some examples but there will be n number of uh, services then there is also a very special service which is called as for video transcoding so basically when producer produces a netflix web series it gives the video file format and then that particular video file comes and there is a transcoding service which encode or transcode it into various formats like 4k hd because based on the user profile and uh, user preference they have to give that level of you know encoding on transcoding on that particular video file so that again happens uh, in one of these microservices okay apart from that what i missed here let me add maybe here somewhere here you will also have ev cache which uses mem cache as in memory database for faster response for things which can be cached in memory is stored in ev cache so all these services will have some things going into ev cache not this one but rest all services will have something going into ev cache so that if there is any faster response is required and if it is a static content that could be fed back and all this data can then be fed back via hysterix back to the user but the question arises that okay you said that this is the intelligent brain which does all all the heavy lifting the smart work which is predominantly on aws but what about the dumb brain dumb brain is actually a very harsh word but why we say dumb brain is because netflix was very clever in that sense netflix understood that the user experience is the most important thing for the success so they segregated their whole decision making framework like checking what user wants what is the user profile what is the user preference what is uh, the billing or the subscription it is all that was given to this but they implemented a homegrown content delivery network which is now called as open connect so this is your cdn network which spans across different geographies different cities so netflix has its own data centers which feeds into this content delivery network and all the video files are already stored here so basically when the response is coming from this architecture basically the user will get certain urls or certain links for that particular video and then the app will directly without letting the user know will connect to the open connect network and feed the actual video and that is the beauty because feeding and the video streaming has been completely segregated with the rest of the architecture so yeah this is a very important thing from the user experience perspective so we understood this section which was more about microservices architecture and making sure that the correct user is uh, logging in authentication user profile everything then this was for the video streaming now another thing is about analytics because while the user is watching squid games you might want to uh, recommend them prison break or breaking bad how you would know you wouldn't want to know what the user preferences are so then you try to use the data which is coming through these microservices and there comes another part which is very important all this data will then be fed into again a apache open source project which is chakwa and this is a massive log collector service so it will collect all the logs all the data from all these microservices and then this will feed directly to a data or message queue of apache kafka there are certain things which i'm skipping because i don't want to over complicate this there's a limit to what i can explain on whiteboard but yeah for example there's also apache samza okay but I, we will not go it is just for message routing but apache kafka is your actual message queue so from apache kafka you will feed the data to apache spark we have a video on spark so this will be all about building your machine learning models your recommendation models because based on these uh, this data you will run your machine learning models to understand what can be recommended to the user okay and this will also feed into elasticsearch okay and this is also primarily used for your analytics purposes there is another use case where uh, chakwa stores the logs in s3 bucket actually there is s3 bucket here as well so all the transcoding when it is done it is stored temporarily in the s3 bucket here also all the different uh, transcoded files get 
get stored. So S3 is used quite massively. But here you have Elastic EMR, which is Elastic Map Reduce Hadoop Framework for further analyzing this big data. So all these are used for your big data analytics, your machine learning, your business intelligence reporting. All that is used via Chukwa Apache Kafka. So this is all, you know, how uh, Netflix works. And then there is a tool which is called as Chaos Monkey and it is used for testing. So the job of Chaos Monkey is to create chaos in the system intentionally to understand how resilient the current system is. So it will intentionally go and hit the billing service and bring it down and see how robust is the system to bring these services back up and running. So it checks for the resiliency. Then there's a lot of technical uh, tech stack which is involved in this architecture. Okay, so there is a DevSecOps pipeline. Uh, there are different uh, tools which we can discuss in detail. But at a high level, this is the architecture with which Netflix is working and processing millions and billions of record. And all this is done using AWS and Open Connect. That's why it is such a robust system. So I hope it was a useful video guys and you got something out of it. If there have been any misses, please let me know in the comments and also I will try to correct or add additional information wherever needed. I try to reduce the complexity of this system to the best possible case. And yes, if you want to learn cloud, uh, check the link in the description. Uh, we have something very good for someone who's looking to start their cloud journey. So I hope it was a useful video. Please give us a like and a subscribe and until next time, keep learning, keep sharing and and keep growing. Bye for now.